Well, it's happening. Ron DeSantis is challenging Donald Trump for the Republican nomination and ultimately the presidency in 2024. He's going to make it official later tonight in a live Twitter space purportedly being hosted by Elon Musk, which is basically a group chat or a live audio stream. So I'll break down the good, bad, and the ugly about this whole situation and why I'm not particularly happy about it. The liberal media hates Ron DeSantis only slightly less than they do Donald Trump, so it is going to be fun to watch them completely lose their mind, like Vanity Fair, which published this headline, which is real. Ron DeSantis will formally announce his 2024 bid with Elon Musk because apparently David Duke wasn't available. <laughs> the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Black People, actually stands for something else, but because of the systemic anti-whiteism, white people aren't allowed to say certain words because it hurts certain people's feelings. So they don't like Ron DeSantis because he's been opposing critical race theory, which is just a code word for anti-whiteism. So recently they issued a travel advisory urging black people not to go to Florida because they say that it's a hostile environment. So I'm sure that the crime rate's probably dropping already. But that's a whole other issue. Obviously, Ron DeSantis doesn't think that Donald Trump can win the general election in 2024 or has serious concerns about it. And maybe he can't. There are a lot of moderate voters who are just sick and tired of hearing about him in general and sick and tired of hearing about his grievances over the last election and his brash behavior. But I doubt that Ron DeSantis is going to be able to even win the primary and get the Republican nomination so why bother even running? Because it might end up only hurting Donald Trump in the long run. It probably would have been best if those two could have worked out a deal last year, two years ago, for DeSantis to be his VP running mate and not even wait until after the primaries and Trump won the nomination again, just announce it and then campaign for the entire 2024 presidential cycle off of that platform. But he could end up being Donald Trump's running mate after all this is over anyway, despite how ugly it gets. And it's going to get ugly. But like most boxing matches and MMA fights, when the fight's over, they hug it out. The loser usually congratulates the winner on a good fight, and they hold no ill will towards each other. Politics is strange. For years, DeSantis' advisors have probably been telling him that as Donald Trump's legal issues pile up, they're going to bog him down so bad, they expected him to lose support amongst Republicans or maybe even drop out. That's why Ron DeSantis has been testing the water this whole time. But as we saw with the first of what will probably be numerous indictments, the one about the payment to Sloppy Daniels, trying to claim that that was a felony because it was involving campaign finance laws or illegal business records. Everybody in America with a brain, the Republicans, only support President Trump more because we all see through that and see what it is, political persecution by some Marxist prosecutor. The same thing happened with the E. Jean Carroll verdict, that whack job who said that he assaulted her in a dressing room 30 years ago. Everybody sees through it, sees it as political persecution, and only supports President Trump more. Remember back in 2016 when the Access Hollywood tape was published, the grab her by the you know what tape, right before a presidential debate with Hillary Clinton and it cast a dark cloud over Donald Trump? Now, Many of us were concerned that that was going to hurt him big time in the polls because it wasn't exactly a good look and it was kind of hard to defend, but he got through that. But there's no comparison between that and the E. Jean Carroll case and the trumped up indictment about the Stormy Daniels payment and these other potential indictments about the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago and the talking with people, the election officials down in Georgia, and the Jack Smith case about January 6th. I mean, what's he going to do? Side with the communists and say that Donald Trump might have done something wrong and that these charges are justified? That would end his career in an instant. And so far, Ron DeSantis has been quite classy and skillful deflecting Donald Trump's attacks against him, particularly when Donald Trump started attacking him right after the 2022 midterms when he won re-election as governor of Florida. It made Donald Trump look kind of petty. And instead of just congratulating him, he started attacking him out of fear that he would ultimately end up running for president. But it was a bad look. But if he starts going after Donald Trump because of his growing legal problems and piling on, he's just going to look like he's siding with the corrupt Democrats. Like I said, it's going to be over for him. And he's going to have to spend half of his time on the campaign trail and doing interviews defending Donald Trump from being persecuted by this corrupt lawfare, legal lawfare, and the deep state. What candidate throughout history has spent half of their time defending their political opponent? Because he's going to have to defend him. If he tries to deflect from those questions, 
in a typical political manner and say, well, I'm just focused on the American people or I'm just focused on bringing inflation down and securing the border. That's not going to cut it. That's going to look weak and that's going to still look like siding with the Democrats. This is not your typical campaign where Ron can point out and exploit his opponent's flaws and weaknesses. Not that Donald Trump doesn't have any, but obviously anybody in America with a brain knows that what's happening to him is not only unfair, but it's criminal. And anybody who doesn't rigorously defend him against it is siding with the enemy. So DeSantis is going to have to walk a tightrope with how he navigates this. He's definitely not Jeb Bush, the Fredo of the Bush crime family, who was also governor of Florida. Ron DeSantis has been a fantastic governor, the most popular and well-liked governor in probably Republican history. So this could end up being a very close race. I think that Donald Trump will still most likely win the Republican nomination and then face Joe Biden or whoever, probably Gavin Newsom if Joe Biden has a health issue or ducks out. But regardless of who the Democrat candidate is, that makes me concerned about the damage that Ron DeSantis is going to do to Donald Trump during this process because some of that mud or a lot of that mud may end up sticking and then the Democrats are going to use that against him in the general. Now, he's probably going to start off nice and try to frame this as if he's running against Biden, not Trump. But at some point, those two are going to go head to head and it's not going to be pretty. And then there's the question of if by some chance Ron DeSantis actually beats Donald Trump and gets the nomination, is Donald Trump going to then endorse Ron DeSantis? Are Donald Trump's hardcore MAGA base going to forgive Ron DeSantis for what they perceive to be taking what was his rightful chance to get revenge against Joe Biden? That's going to be tough. A lot of Republicans may be so upset with Ron DeSantis if by chance that happens, they might not vote at all. Whatever happens, it's going to be a mess because our country is a mess. So buckle up. The differences between the Republicans and the Democrats have never been bigger. It's the party of drag clowns preying on children, wanting to give them trans surgeries, and the Moloch worshiping abortion lovers, and the losers who want a UBI, universal basic income and free handouts, versus the party of normal, hardworking Americans. I don't know about you, but I side with the latter. And if you're like me and support President Trump, then go to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and order my Wanted for President shirt. And if you use the promo code MAGA25 at the checkout this week for Memorial Day, you can save 25% off of anything. So order your Wanted for President shirt, your Conspiracy Theorists Were Right shirt, or any of my awesome designs, all available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below, enter the promo code MAGA25 at the checkout to save 25% this week, and check them out!